got to go live now to Tel Aviv. The Israel Defence Spokesperson, Lieutenant Colonel Jonathan Conricus, joins me. Thank you for joining us. A big day in the context of this conflict. Does it amount to a ceasefire? Good morning. Thank you for having me. Well, what will eventually, hopefully happen, will be a pause in operations in order to honour the terms of the agreement and facilitate the safe repatriation of Israeli hostages after 47 days in Hamas captivity that started on the 7th of October. Uh, some Israeli hostages will be let home. And uh, of course, once that agreement is uh, completed and ended, we will return to what we've been doing since October the 7th, dismantling Hamas and making sure that they will never again exist nor have the ability mm -hmm. to conduct the attacks that they did on October the 7th. So 53 hostages in the first group. Is there potential for that to increase, though, uh, reports out of Israel suggested that there would be a further pause if more hostages were to be released. Is that accurate? That is the statement given by the Prime Minister that um, for uh, 10 hostages released, there will be an option of an additional day of temporary pause of operations. That is my understanding, yes. What's the intelligence that you have as to how many hostages remain? We, we know that there were more than 200 taken. Do you have a sense as to how many remain in captivity? 236 is the updated number that we have. Women, children, toddlers, elderly people, men uh, that have, were taken on October the 7th, some of them alive, some of them dead and I won't go into the details, Israelis, dual nationals and foreigners. When, when you say some of them are dead, have, have they been killed in recent actions? The, you know, the terrorist group Hamas have made claims about the Israeli strikes. Uh, is there any truth to those claims, which I think quite rightly you point out need to be taken with a great deal of caution, the claims from that terror organisation? Yeah, no, I was referring to uh, soldiers or bodies of soldiers that we know were taken when they were no longer alive. Uh, and of course, Hamas has been playing this, uh, conducting psychological warfare with uh, families of the hostages all along, uh, releasing all kinds of lies and uh, misinformation, which is to be expected from a terrorist organization. But uh, I was referring to the fact that we know that some of the uh, Israelis that were taken were taken when they were no longer alive. Do you see this as a successful next step in the operation that you've put enough pressure on Hamas that they've been willing to negotiate here? Well, Hamas has been asking and pleading for this for quite some time, and it's taken, you know, days to hash out the details. I think it is very important, we in the IDF think that it is very important to remain uh, on the ground and continue to apply pressure on Hamas, tactical pressure, relentless pressure on their commanders and their facilities and their personnel. And uh, that pressure, of course, is vital for us to be able to get our people home. It also generates additional intelligence uh, so that we can get a better situational awareness. And as I said before, once the uh, pause is over, it will be returned to fighting and the order of the day will be to continue to dismantle Hamas. Mm. Lieutenant Colonel, the, while it is un, unequivocally good news that 30 children among this group of 53 will be returned home, is there a risk here that Hamas will regroup to some extent during the four-day pause? Well, I think it's uh, more than a risk. I think that is the working assumption that Hamas will definitely aspire to do so. And uh, we, of course, have to be vigilant on the ground, uh, mindful of the fact that the last time that Israel had a, an internationally brokered ceasefire with Hamas was in 2014. That ceasefire was violated by Hamas uh, when they struck an Israeli force in southern Rafah, in southern Gaza, and uh, took the body of a, an Israeli officer, Lieutenant Hadar Goldin. 
and he has been held in Hamas uh, possession ever since. So there's a very uh, relevant precedent here, and we have to be mindful of that. And our troops on the ground will be vigilant. We will honor our word and our commitment, and uh, let's hope that the enemy does the same. With the international criticism Israel has received, you've heard much of it. I'm sure a lot of it has been put to you about the, the impact on hospitals and civilians in Gaza. Can you give our viewers a sense of how seriously the IDF takes that, that issue and what's being done to try and limit the deaths of civilians? Yeah, of course, we are aware of the uh, attention that uh, this war against Hamas is uh, generating. Uh, just looking at the previous item uh, of uh, strikes in schools relevant that in, in relation to this, I think it is amazing. No other conflict, I think, in the world uh, generates so much interest and passion. Um, but that is beside the point. We listen to the a criticism and we respond to it and from day one we have said very clearly the humanitarian needs of the civilian population are important they are not our enemy we have vacated them from the battlefield we have allowed them safe passage we are providing together with egypt and the us and the un humanitarian aid into southern gaza we have established a humanitarian zone in southern gaza and we continue to listen to the needs of the humanitarian or of the humanitarian needs of the population and uh, try to uh, provide support for them they are not our enemy hamas is and we will continue to be relentless in our pursuit of hamas the militants their military capabilities their infrastructure and in parallel with that we will continue to distinguish between them and the civilian population uh, at the end of this war i think that we will free gaza strip from hamas and at the end of it, the people of Hamas will be in a, a people of uh, Gaza, sorry, will be in a much better place than they have been for the last 17 years under the oppressive rule of Hamas.